Hello, my name is Ben Mengden. I work with uh, HOK. I'm out of the Houston office. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about sort of our beginning uh, way at integrating GIS into our design process and so some of our uh, unique workflows. So um, HOK has uh, 25 offices, 1,800 employees. We do a variety of different kinds of projects um, from uh, architecture to engineering to planning and, and a variety of different uh, buildings and, and uh, as, as part of architecture. Um, the group that I'm with is uh, consulting. We, uh, this is one of the projects we worked on, uh, or the team worked on. This is Kaust. It's in north of Jeddah in Saudi Arabia, uh, several hundred acres, um, scores of buildings, uh, different building types. Um, here in this one case, this was a uh, university and uh, technology. This is more my home. This is more of what I'm asked to, to look into. This is a typical industrial site. Um, we come in and look at their occupied buildings. They're, they have a, a portfolio of buildings that they need, may need help with. They have unique, uh, unique concerns, and so we, we come and help uh, companies be able to make those decisions. Uh, we do um, change management and benchmarking studies, and, but specifically I work mostly with uh, strategic facility planning and master planning. My boss, uh, Steve Parshall, uh, senior VP at HOK, uh, is uh, instrumental in developing this process and writing this, this book. We look at goals and facts, concepts and needs of our clients and the end users uh, to figure out what the problem is. Sort of we're seeking the problem that design is trying to solve. Um, and we do this through a, a unique process looking at function, form, economy and time. Um, and things like filling out these, these uh, five by, or excuse me, eight by 10 cards um, and uh, drawing on, on pieces of, of uh, maps over, over, it's very uh, uh, tactile and interactive and uh, over long periods of time. So we, we, uh, these are some of the examples of the cards. Uh, we try to capture the essence of what uh, what the client may need or want, or what are the parameters of the project, or uh, what are the unique things about the site. Uh, and this, this process is one that works uh, for a variety of different kinds of projects. Um, so this is a campus, this is a, a laboratory, um, and so it's, it's a, a well-suited for um, versatility. Um, and this is just one component of it, um, but all of this to come to that that problem that we're trying to solve, actually, or sets of problems that we're trying to solve. Um, and then we have used some GIS information uh, in the past, but I was specifically brought on to help to uh, bolster that. And uh, you can see here in this image just all of the, all of the different uh, interaction that maybe it's those cards, maybe it's these maps, maybe it's uh, questionnaires, maybe it's um, uh, them sending us information from the site like a, a CAD document or whatnot. And then we're trying to take uh, GIS to uh, uh, have that sort of conversation back and forth and begin to deepen the, the analysis as well as the vis visualization of the process and the result uh, to get at better design decisions. And we, we're gonna look at a, uh, access and circulation or maybe we're looking at restricted zones or s safety issues or uh, these sites are these high, sites are really unique in that they have uh, lots of, of uh, complex problems and and maybe they're trying to get this one group to work next to this other group and so the buildings in the wrong spot um, often what they have is just CAD documents and uh, it's just that's how they do their business and so uh, this becomes uh, something that I can take and I begin to do my investigation, uh, then bringing in the information that, that we had captured during these workshops and during emails and such. Maybe I'll take the CAD and I'll, I'll uh, give it attribute information. I'll translate it into, into GIS by georeferencing it or uh, uh, just pulling out certain elements um, and then giving, again, giving it attribute information so it becomes more of a uh, intelligent. And, from that, we'll, uh, maybe we'll need to uh, digitize information or create, edit uh, new information, uh, whether that be like here, just a, a existing building footprint, or whether that be um, a lay down area where they need to, to put stuff on the ground. And, and so that's less of a, 
something you're going to find on aerial photograph. We come up with a, a pretty decent uh, list of layers that then becomes the framework for uh, this deeper analysis. And we, uh, it also becomes a, a, a really a way that we can begin to internally uh, scroll around the site and begin to uh, try out and test things. Here's a, a like five minute walk radii and, and what if, we, what if we did this? What if we put a building here? What, what's gonna be the result? What if we put a, a new road in here? I need to know the, the length of that road because I need to estimate cost and then be able to play that back to the client and see if that's something that, that is, is needed. Uh, my team works a lot in Excel and so, and they do, not many of them have any GIS experience at all. So uh, what we do is we work in Excel and then the idea is that we'll take that information we'll be able to attach it to the, to the GIS model and uh, make it again stronger and, and more meaningful. Um, we got a lot of potential about where we want to take this and, and you've seen some amazing things with uh, others that are doing some really great work. Uh, and this is just a smattering of, of uh, whether we take this into 3D, uh, we begin to use it as a, a visualization tool, interactive tool, maybe it'd be wonderful for us to be able to, to interactively work on this with clients and stuff. That's, that's what I have, thank you very much. Thank you.